to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. If you are, hi, my name's Hermione and I'm currently renovating this dusty old Victorian house and trying to do so on a budget. Which brings me to the topic of today's video, which is the living room makeover. So over the last few weeks, I have been getting this place in ship shape because we've had it livable now for like three or four months and it's just never been finished. And with Christmas coming, I want to decorate. So I thought it was about time I finished the space up and shared it with you guys. Let me first kind of flash back to what this space looked like when we first got the keys to the house. It was horrible. It smelled really bad in this sitting room. It was so dark and dingy. The walls were like a dark purple. The ceiling was brown. The skirting board was brown. The door was black. It had been spray painted. It was nasty. And it just wasn't the kind of space where you wanted to kick back and watch Netflix, to say the least. During the renovation, we got a big hole cut out in the wall so we had access to the dining room. And it just lets a lot more light in now so it feels much more bright and airy in here. We had the whole room plastered, we sanded, stained the floors, painted the walls. And now here we are with essentially kind of a blank canvas with not much personality. So that brings us to about a few weeks ago before I got stuck into all of the DIY projects. So um, let me show you how some of those went. <laughs> so if you've seen my last DIY, you'll know that the fireplace and mantle needed some serious work. So I sanded it down, primed it, painted it, and then had it all installed. But after the installation, I realized it still needed a few touch-ups. So I reluctantly, I had to get stuck in. <laughs> The mantle's already been installed, I didn't realise there'd be such a huge gap around it, so I'm going to tape it and paint around here. I don't often use tape because I feel like it bleeds too much, but I've realised I was using the wrong tape. <laughs> so I got some of the, the proper stuff, and let's hope we're not going to have any accidents with this. <laughs> so I went to town with my frog tape, and I taped up as much as I possibly could around the hearth and the mantle to ensure that I didn't get fireplace paint in places that might be difficult to remove fireplace paint. I do not want to paint this ever again. <laughs> I think we're ready. <laughs> papered and taped, taped and papered, taped. Let's do this. Not only did I paint around the edges of the iron insert, but I also gave it a good touch up all over as it had been pretty beaten since having the walls plastered. I also didn't realise just how much dust and grime was in the grate until halfway through, so I brought out my trusty Henrietta the Hoover to clean some of it away so I could continue painting. With the insert done, I made a start on painting the hearth. For this, I just went in with the same wood paint that I used for the mantle. It's kind of boring, but it works. Once it was dry, it was time for the most satisfying part of the job. <laughs> To finish it off, I threw a couple of candles in there as this chimney is currently capped at the moment. Not forever, but right now. And I just dusted off the mantle, gave it a good clean so that I could style it up later. And this is what it's looking like right now. With that side of the room looking a whole lot better, I moved on over to the sideboard, which needed a little refresh. This guy's gonna have a mini makeover. I love this piece. I think the shape is great. I love the color of the wood. I just don't love the drawer fronts. I don't like the way they have stripes going down them. So I'm gonna paint the drawer fronts and change out the handles. I picked up these guys in Anthropology. They were on sale. Picked up two big ones for the middles and then four smaller ones for the outside edges. They're pretty different, but I think they really go with the mid-century kind of style of the piece. So uh, let's get started. So I started by working on removing the old handles which came off with a simple twist. The new handles would be positioned slightly differently to the old ones so I had to fill the original holes with some wood filler before sanding and priming the surfaces of the drawers. I used a small foam roller to coat each drawer front with the primer, I then coated it in a warm light grey paint, the same as I used on the fireplace. I left them to dry overnight and when they were done I used a drill to create holes to add the new longer drawer pulls. To ensure that they were centred perfectly I used a tape measure and marked the correct points with a pencil before drilling because I didn't want to fill it with wood filler again. <laughs> I decided to place the handles in alternating directions just to add a bit of interest to the piece and I think the finished result really works well with the mid-century kind of feeling of the unit 
while still giving it a fresh look and an update. I gave this piece a very quick blast with some wood furniture polish. I try to do this every few weeks and then I just put all my knickknacks back in place and this is how it turned out. With the drawers complete, I moved on to my final project, which was a really nice and easy one, some IKEA shelving. I picked up these brackets, they're about £10 for each set, and a simple white shelf to match. I spray painted them gold to give them a finish that matched the other features in the room, and I installed them as per the instructions. I used a leveling app on my phone, which actually surprisingly did a very good job to straighten out the shelves. Once they were installed, I was really keen to style them up and finish off the rest of the room, but before doing any of this, I gave the room a really quick clean, kind of primarily the mirrors and the glass surfaces, which seemed to pick up loads of fingerprints, and then I was finally ready to style it. So on the mantelpiece, I added this pegboard from Sainsbury's and candle holders on either side. These are from Matalan. I thought that the brushed gold tied in really nicely with the other gold accents in the room, like the shelf brackets and the handles. The striped vase is something I picked up in a charity shop and the gold leaf candle holder is from Anthropology. Moving on to the shelf, this is mainly a collection of items that I've picked up over time, including some thrifted books, um, a TK Maxx frame, a Primark lamp, another pot from Anthropology, and this lovely little green vase from Hamer. Items on the top shelf are mainly thrifted as well, or hand-me-downs, but the floral print at the back is from Decenio, and the pink skull is from Flying Tiger. I kept the desk pretty simple. This is actually my great-grandmother's poker table, I think. <laughs> um, and I just put a big green fruit bowl, which was from TK Maxx years ago, on top of it. And this really lovely like deep green cushion from Urban Outfitters. As for the other side of the fireplace, I put up a painting by my mum, which I absolutely love. She did this for her A-level art piece. I love the colours, I think they really pop on the white walls. I will take this down at Christmas though, just because I don't want to accidentally get snow spray on it as that's where the tree's going. Underneath I have this old chair with a cushion on it from H&M Home that I actually picked up very recently. And then next to the TV, I just added a few more knickknacks, Cards Against Humanity, you know, a couple of candles to spruce up the space. And then lastly, by the door, I hung my favorite print from Decenio. I think this is really nice as you come in the room. With all of the DIY projects done, the room was finally finished and this is what it looks like. pleased with this space. I feel like it's a perfect balance between myself and my partner Ben's personalities. He's got the leather couch, which I hate, but I've also kind of balanced it out with a few pink books in the bookshelf. And it's just so cozy and the kind of space that we can both enjoy. We can sit back, relax, watch Netflix, finally in a room that's not smelly and purple. <laughs> I've tried to stick with the old traditional Victorian feeling in this room while still making it a bit more modern by sneaking in some mid-century inspired pieces and a little bit of colour here and there. Now, in all honesty, there are a few small areas of this room that need doing still, but I'm waiting to get professionals in to do that. Some of it's gonna have to wait till after Christmas, but I need to get the skirting board completely replaced. I also need the ceiling rows painted and slightly repaired and the door's doing, but other than that, the sitting room is done and I will keep up with you guys with the updates on those things in my DIYery series. If you haven't already subscribed, you totally should because I do a series called DIYery where I show you all of the behind the scenes stuff of this house. Anyway, if you guys are doing any kind of renovation projects, please leave your stories in the comments below because I love reading them. And uh, yeah, it makes me feel a lot less alone <laughs> on this journey. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.